please now calm down and get the understanding once i see logarithm something simple must happen here the base must be the target to get the final answer this is the meaning how many times must base 2 multiply itself to produce the value of 8 Is logarithm a difficulty for you? Then, I am here to give you a simple way and an easy way to learn logarithm, understand and even solve more questions in logarithm. Welcome, lovely one, to Math Made Easy tutorial videos with me, Anthony Osemensa, popularly referred to as Sir Tony, the mathematics doctor. In this video, I am going to show you an easy way to understand logarithm to use that same understanding to solve more questions in logarithm and make sure that you love using logarithm in your mathematics. Let us begin. Logarithm in mathematics simply means the inverse form of an exponential function. This also explains the fact that if you have an exponential function that we also refer to as an indices function, you can reverse that function to get a logarithm. That also means that logarithm can solve any question that indices cannot solve. So simply put, logarithm is also a number like all numbers in mathematics. But with logarithm number, you have to represent it with the initial L-O-J, log. So anytime you have a log attached to any expression in mathematics, it then becomes logarithm. Now let me explain the appearance in terms of this log for you to understand. As I readily said, in the basic sense of writing logarithm, you have to represent the logarithm with L-O-G. That means that this entire logarithm word is represented when you are writing it with L-O-G. This is the short form of logarithm. Now, please note that once you write log, you must get two values to make this log a complete mathematical expression or a mathematical number. The first one will have to be, let me intentionally put three. So this is log three. Now, the three I just wrote is referred to as number under logarithm. It is referred to as a number. Now, there's a small one. Let me put two intentionally. So, I have put three and two here. Please, when you are writing it, write it such that three will be bigger than the two. So, the three is referred to as the number of the log. And then the two is referred to as the base of the log. That means whoever sees a logarithm expression or a logarithm number written must see two the logs number and the logs base at a point in time the base cannot be written or the base may not be written in that case we then say no base means base 10 so it is a normal property in logarithm that is a character of writing logarithm whenever the base is not written that doesn't mean there is no base but it simply means that the base is in base 10 so you can choose to write it or you can choose to ignore it when the base is base 10. let us take another log number as an example so I have the log of 5 base 7. so i read it this way log 5 base 7. don't forget the log must be there showing this is a logarithm number now the 5 shows the number 5 must be here and it should be bigger than the 7. 7 is the base. So it is a complete log. Let's also take another one. I have log 2.8 base 7. So this is also a log. The reason why I brought 2.8, I want to express or tell you the fact that a log's number can be a decimal. Here it was real number 5. Here it was real number 3. It can also be a decimal. Let me give you another log. We take the log of 8 divided by 11 base 3 now this is a fraction you can also choose to put the fraction in a bracket just to make it a complete number as a fraction with a log so that means that with this log the number actually is 8 over 11 depicting a fraction base 3 so it's log 8 over 11 base 3 and this is a complete logarithm so there's something I want you to know that any number could be the number of the logarithm it is not only real numbers decimals could be the number for logarithm fractions could be the number for logarithm also look at this another example log root 2 base 5 so I have brought a third 
And a third is any number that appears under the square root sign without giving a whole number. So root 2 is a set. So the log of root 2 base 5. So this is an example of also a logarithm. Now finally, let me bring a variable. That is log into bracket x plus 1. Let's say base 4. So the complete number here is x plus 1, which is a binomial. And this is base 4. So log x plus 1 base 4. So ladies and gentlemen, in a nutshell, I am trying to say that a logarithm here can be represented with any form of real number. But at this point, I am going to help you use this logarithm to solve mathematical questions. I'm going to give you a massive understanding with a logarithm so that you find it very easy when you're handling them in math or solving math questions or even in examination. Let us continue and see more things about logarithm. Now that you have been able to know how to represent or write a logarithm number, let me introduce you to something called a single logarithm. And that is what we are going to use in log questions for you to simplify or solve them. What is a single logarithm? For example, the log of 9 base 3. A log number like this is referred to as a single logarithm. It is very simple. This is because the log is only one with a number and the base. Now, this can be found for or the actual value of log 9 base 3, you can find it. When you use a calculator, specifically a scientific calculator, you will get an answer. The meaning of log 9 base 3 is actually you want a single number to represent log 9 base 3. This is the number of the log and this is the base. Now, this is what you're expected to do. Check the number. The number is 9. Now, go to the base and ask yourself a question. How many times must this base 3 multiply itself to produce the 9? So if you check, 3 times 3 is 9. This is it. 3 times 3 gives you 9. So in actual meaning, 3 raised to a power of 2 will give you 9. So there are two meanings here. How many times must the 3 multiply itself to produce 9? It was 2 times. The 3 multiplied itself 1, 2. 2 times to produce 9. And that is why it is 3 power 2. So the power of the 3 was 2. And 3 had to multiply itself 2 times to produce 9. So log 9 base 3 is equal to 2. Meaning 3 has to multiply itself 2 times. 3 times 3 to get 9. So the meaning of log 9 base 3 is 2. Meaning the base is actually the secret to getting the final answer for a log. So you just have to use the base to a power or an exponent to produce the number. And that power or that exponent, in this case, it was 2, becomes the final answer of the log. Let us take another question. Let us take another logarithm. Let's take log 8, base 2. Please, now calm down and get the understanding. Once I see logarithm, something simple must happen here. The base must be the target to get a final answer. This is the meaning. How many times must base 2 multiply itself to produce the value of 8? Now, let me help you out. It will be 2 times 2 times 2. Don't forget, how many times must this base 2 multiply itself to produce 8? It will be 2 times 2, which is 4. 4 times 2, 8. So let's count the number of times. It will be 1, 2, 3. Meaning the base 2 must be power 3 in order to get 8. So this means base 2 must multiply itself 1, 2, 3 times to produce the value 8 or the number 8. So finally, log 8 base 2 must be 3. The answer for it to be 3. Since there is a logarithm, now I came to ask myself that how many times must this base multiply itself to produce 8? Or what should be the power of this base to give me the value of 8? And 2 power 3 will produce 8. So when you put log 8 base 2 on your calculator or a scientific calculator, your answer will be 3. Or if you solve it on your own, if you are very good in finding the final answer for this, if you finish with the answer, your value of the answer will be 3. So finally, the base is the secret to get the final answer of a logarithm. I repeat again, how many times must the base raise to a power? Or how many times must the base multiply itself to produce 8? 
For what power must the base be raised to to give you 8? And the base must be raised to a power of 3 to produce 8. That is why the answer is 3. So 2 raised to the power of 3 is 8. And that is how we solve log question. Let us take another question. Let us take the log 125 base 5. So this is log 125 base 5. This is a number and this is the base. So if you want to get a final answer for this, don't forget the secret. It is the base that actually brings the final answer. How do we do that? Now ask yourself a simple question. How many times must 5 multiply itself? That is to say the base 5. How many times must it multiply itself to produce 125? Let us see. It will be 5 times 5 as 25 times another 5 as 125. So that means the base 5 must multiply itself 3 times to produce 125. You can now also write this as 5 raised to the power 3 is equal to 125. This means that this 5 must multiply itself 3 times to produce 125 or this 5 must raise to a power of 3 to produce 125. So the final answer of log 125 base 5 is 3. That is it. Now let me explain it well. 5 must raise to the power 3 to produce 1, 2, 5. And that is the final answer. Now at this stage, let me give you three examples. Solve them and leave your answer in the comment section. Whilst I explain the laws and the properties of logarithms to solve a complete question with you. Now, at this point, I have given you four questions. It says simplify log 27 base 3, log 36 base 6, log 16 base 4, and finally log 8 1 base 3. Get the final answers for these logarithms. Let me now take a question here and solve it for you. Then you do the rest on your own. I'll take the log of 36 base 6. So log 36 base 6. It is simple. Since we have a logarithm, I'll use the base as my target. Now, how many times must this base 6 multiply itself to produce 36? Or how many times must this base 6 be raised to a power? Or what is the power of base 6? So that I can get 36. And we can say 6 times 6 is 36. That is to say 6 raised to the power of 2 is 36. And since base 6 must multiply itself 2 times to produce 36, the log of 36 base 6 will be 2. Meaning 6 raised to the power of 2 is 36. Or 6 times itself 2 times will give me 36. So that is how it is done. Please, the rest of the questions, solve them on your own and leave your answers in the comment section. Please comment on it if you love the video and want us to do more video. In the next video or in the part two of this video, I am going to come your way with the same logarithm. I'm going to teach you instances whereby the logarithms cannot be found with the base and how to use the laws of logarithm and the properties of logarithm to solve more complicated logarithm questions. So I'll come back again with a part two of this video. Don't forget, please like, share and comment on our videos. Continue to follow us on TikTok and also subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily updates of videos. My name is Antonio Semenza, the Mathematics Doctor. See you in the next video, part two. God bless you and thank you all.